Representative Eric Cantor, who laid out the agenda of the House over the next couple of days, and the, the, the minority whip, the Democratic whip, Steny Hoyer. We're going to show you some of that conversation and give you an idea of what's ahead for Friday and the weekend. This is from earlier on the House floor. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to speak out of order for one minute for the purpose of informing the members of a change in the upcoming legislative schedule. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to inform my colleagues that the House will meet at 10 a.m. for morning hour and 12 p.m. for legislative business tomorrow. As the members know, this is a change from the original calendar. Due to ongoing negotiations, Mr. Speaker, surrounding continued appropriations for the remainder of fiscal year 2011, I believe it is both appropriate and necessary for this House to be in session tomorrow. I expect legislative business to include, but may not be limited to, H.J. Res. 37, a resolution of disapproval regarding the FCC's recent Internet and Broadband Industry Practices Regulation ruling. Votes are possible at any time afternoon tomorrow. At this point, it is too early to tell whether the House will need to be in session this weekend. In the case of lapse in appropriations, however, I fully expect the House to meet. Mr. Speaker, we will not leave town until we have fulfilled our obligation to cut spending, to begin getting our fiscal house in order, and to keep... Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we are House will come to order. Mr. Speaker, we are we are committed. We are committed to getting our fiscal will suspend. The House will come to order. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to getting our fiscal house in order and to keep the government functioning. Therefore, members should keep therefore members should keep their schedules for this weekend as flexible as possible. And I yield back. I thank the uh, Majority Leader for yielding, and I share his view that uh, we ought to keep the government running uh, for uh, not only the sake of our economy, but for the sake of all those that rely on the federal government. And my friend has made the observation that in the past that shutting down the government, and I believe the Speaker has made the same observation, was not a rational policy for us to pursue. I ask the gentleman uh, because I believe that the resolution that we will be considering uh, will not either pass the Senate nor be signed by the President. Uh, in light of that, and in light of the fact that uh, the Majority Leader of the Senate uh, and the Speaker have both indicated that uh, negotiations are ongoing, uh, would the gentleman agree uh, to a unanimous consent uh, that we, as we have done so often in the past, uh, when uh, uh, the Majority uh, Democrats that were in control of the House and the Senate disagreed with President Bush that we would have a uh, hold in place, uh, unanimous consent, con uh, continuing resolution, uh, not changing the status on either side of the negotiations uh, for uh, seven days, which would give uh, the uh, parties the opportunity to uh, come to an agreement. My understanding from uh, the leader of the Senate is that uh, we have agreed to some $70 billion in cuts, uh, which is a, a substantial uh, way towards what you wanted and uh, a show that we share the view that we need to have fiscal uh, restraint. So I asked my friend uh, if I made a unanimous consent request that we continue the government uh, authority to stay in uh, running until next Friday uh, without changing the status quo so that neither party would be disadvantaged and that our government would, in fact, as the gentleman observes as his objective, uh, be able to stay uh, in service to the American people. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, first of all, I respond to the gentleman to say that there's no indication 
in a definite way that the Senate would not take up and pass uh, the, the piece of legislation uh, that, that we would bring up today. As, as a response to the second part of his inquiry uh, regarding our going along with the unanimous consent, I would say to the gentleman, no, we, we don't accept the status quo. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, America is broke. That is why we are trying to address the need. That is why we are trying to address the need to get our. Mr. Speaker, the House is not in order. Gentleman's correct. The House is not in order. Mr. Speaker, that is why we are trying to address our fiscal crisis and to get the debt under control. Mr. Speaker, will the gentleman yield? Will the gentleman yield? I yield. I want to inform the gentleman that the White House has just issued uh, an, an attempt to veto the resolution that you are offering. Uh, I, I, I tell my friend that if, in fact, uh, the gentleman wants to keep the government running while negotiations uh, proceed, we have already agreed to a substantial billions of dollars uh, in reductions uh, in uh, spending for 2011. Uh, we did so, uh, and we've agreed on that. As a matter of fact, as the gentleman knows, I have voted for both of the previous resolutions. Uh, I believed both of those could pass, and in fact, I was correct. They did pass. I tell my friend, this resolution, in my view, will not pass. However, it is my understanding that both the Speaker and Mr. Reid and the President are continuing to have discussions to try to uh, overcome this impasse. That is the legislative process. We never shut down the government when we had the majority and President Bush was in power. And the reason, and I tell my friend, the reason we did not shut it down is because... House will come to order. Gentlemen will suspend is because we agreed with the premise you have stated and the premise the Speaker has stated that shutting down the government was not a process that was useful for our economy, for jobs, for our people, or for the services that are expected of us. What is useful is for us to rationally uh, provide a context in which negotiations, which quite obviously have not yet been completed, uh, are completed. Now, I, you've heard me talk about the Perfectionist Caucus. Uh, you can't get it all your way. We can't get it all our way. Uh, but in fact, the American public overwhelmingly uh, elected President Obama for a four-year term. He's in office. Now, uh, Mr. Gingrich uh, said that we, uh, we were ignoring the 2010 election results. Uh, we observed that the 2008 election results were regularly ignored by your side of the aisle in the last two years. What I am saying to my friend, there is a rational way for us to proceed. And very frankly, when we were in your shoes, we did so. When we couldn't reach agreement with President Bush. House will come to order. Now, House will come to the order. The Tea Party on your side, as so often is the case. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. And, Speaker, and as is so, as Mr. Is so Speaker, often the case, my time. Mr. As Speaker, is so often Mr. the Speaker, case, reclaiming my time. Gentleman reclaims his time. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I, I would say let, let us look at, at why we are where we are to begin with. trying uh, to do the business of the American people. Uh, we, we, we do not want to shut the government down. Uh, we don't accept the status quo. 
We don't want to bankrupt this nation. Uh, we believe there